All right, so what we got so far, what we did before yesterday was we developed these two formulas here. <coughs> Got those two formulas. This is basically uh, seven, one, and or seven. Is it eight one? Uh, I, can, I skipped that section two because that's where it introduced the brand new T score distribution, the one that was invented by the guy that worked at the Guinness Brewery. Right? I love the word brewery. It makes you sound drunk. It's like judicial system. <laughs> of course, every word makes you sound drunk if you're um, And then this, so this is the brand new thing. It looks very similar to this one. And the equation itself tells you when you have to do something different. When are you allowed to use z-scores? There should be two things you tell me. When can you use z-scores to make a confidence interval for a mean? Normally distributed. Normally distributed? And I have the population standard deviation, 11. So it's got to be normal to do anything, period. So that's got to be, that's where we start. Is it normal? If the answer is no, you can't do anything. Too bad. <laughs> or you can't construct a confidence interval anyway. So it's got to be normal. If I know the population standard deviation, I can use z-scores. If I only know the sample standard deviation, I've got to cover my ass for that fact somehow. And I do that by using t-scores. They're always going to be a little bit bigger than the corresponding z-score would have been to almost uh, figuratively cover our ass, right? You just got to make it a little bit bigger because there's something we don't know, we're not sure about. All right, guys, so now, of course, if you missed last time, you're out in a couple different ways. I didn't bring any extras, and you're not really used to this. What, what is it that I that the chart requires me to know that kind of was another little formula in its own right? What do I need to be able to use a chart? Not the size of the sample, I need actually the... So I need the degrees of freedom. Right, the degrees of freedom. Now, to get a specific value, I've got to know the concept. But just to use the chart, I've got to know the degrees of freedom. It's just one less than the sample size question. OK. Ooh, t -score charts. So let's, do, uh, let's just do a couple of quick t-score chart uses here. Bless you. Bless you. Say n is 7. S is 2, and I want to, uh, let's say, what do you got, Jeff? 90% confidence interval. I know it's normally distributed. What would the T score be? I'll tell you it's a T score. Let's say N is uh, 101. S is 48. Yeah. 
All right, let's take a look here. What's the degrees of freedom for this guy? Six. Yeah. For this guy, 100. Now, in general, you'll notice, let me just say something in general here. Five degrees of freedom of 66. You know, like a sample size is 67. Does the chart have 66? No. So, you always go down, which actually means go up in the chart. So just deal with that. You always go to be more careful. If I had a degrees of freedom of 66 or something, I would use the 60 number to cover my ass for not knowing what it really is. So you always go in the air on the side of being more careful. So you use the bigger T-score. Now, if you had a degrees of freedom of 69 and you use this one, I'm not going to take points off. I'm just going to say, you know, we should have rounded down, but at that point, it's pretty close. You notice why they start doing 5 and then 10 and then 100? Because these are changing slower and slower and slower. That's why they can jump so much. I like it. I like it. So what do you guys get? Uh, degrees of freedom of 6. Which column are you looking at for 90%? Yeah, if it's 90% inside, there must be 10% out in the two tails. So it's got to be this column here for 10%. And you stop at 6, and you get yeah, 1.943. I like it. So that would be the number you would plug into the confidence interval. Instead of a z-score, you would put that t-score. Make your error a little bigger than it would have been. Just because there's something we're less sure about. We only know s. We don't know sigma. What about this guy? You're using frame 100. 98%. So what column am I looking at for 98%? Second one. There'll be 2% out in the two tails. 100. It's like 2.364. Before I forget, I always forget this. Uh, I love to use this symbol, and, it, and it's going to come back very soon. Uh, they use the symbol alpha. Right? You can have a long, little cool fish do. Alpha or fat little alpha or whatever, just like sigma. Be fat or skinny, depending on you know, not okay how it's doing. Uh, Alpha is just the area in the tail or tails. So if I have a 90% confidence interval, alpha would be 0.10. What would alpha divided by 2 be? 0.05. So if you ever see this symbol in your reading of the stats book, which you're doing, uh, you'll understand what it means. They just cut it in half because there's two tails. Right? So alpha, alpha would be... 0.10, that's the area in the tails. And alpha over 2 would be 0.05, that's the area in the one tail. So if you ever see those symbols, that's what that means. Okay. Not too bad. So it, it, the working of this is exactly the same as the working of this. It's just that i got to get this number from that T-score chart, different chart. It's actually easier to use, to be honest, than the Z-score chart was. All right, how do you feel about that kind of stuff? So any situation we're in where I'm taking a sample and I don't know the, the standard deviation of the population, I'm going to have to use a T-score. So that's going to happen to us again very soon. I like it. Uh, so, 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 what I want you guys to do, let me see. This can get very interesting. Let me first give out... One for the females. So this side, don't worry about it. The, the colorful side, the one with the little pictures in the, in the red writing, don't worry about that side yet. That's chapter nine. I'm going to look at this side, confidence interval practice. That makes sense. Uh, let's see, this is for women.
Yeah, don't worry. Credit We've got any more information there? Sounds like no. I'm going to give them their own work. Because this part is part of the Now, make this a little easier on you. Wait a minute, if you would please. Group up with one other woman. At least. You make two or three. This is two or three. Oh, uh, you'll leave me like, I don't want to do that shit. Too bad. Do it. Okay. Especially if you don't have a calculator or a T score chart, you probably should find somebody. Same thing for the men. Do the same thing, guys. You want to get, find another dude or another two dudes. Group up. Make sure i you have a uh, Everybody got a worksheet? If you need a calculator, please bring up an ID, you can borrow one. Up here. No, I didn't bring it with me. Sorry, buddy. So group up with somebody that's got those. Oh, no. 